In the Bible, God says to Moses, you must build the Ark of the Covenant with two cherubim above the Ark, covering over, and inside the Ark shall be placed the manna and the law of God, the two tablets. Well, I'm here to tell you that the optic thalamus is the Ark of the Covenant, and the uh, limbic system and the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, the pineal gland, these are the Holy of Holies. If you know the Gospels well, you will know all the scriptures that are referring to it. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. The light of the world is the optic thalamus. Keep your eye simple, for if your eye is dark, your whole body will be dark. That eye has always been known as the third eye. In fact, it's the spiritual eye. There are four brains in the human body. The cerebrum, what is otherwise known as the God brain, the cerebellum, which is the man brain, the medulla oblongata, which is responsible for the um, involuntary actions in the body, such as breathing and blood circulation. And the fourth brain is the solar plexus, which is more related to the animal instinctive brain, which receives images from the ether, from the air, just like the animals do, and they react correspondingly without reason and logic instinctively and if we are able to wrestle with the angel as jacob did and he got a name change to israel then we are able to see god face to face because that's what jacob did when he climbed the ladder and he called the place pineal interesting pineal sounds like pineal the bible is secretly encoded in kings 8 1 there's a mention of the most holy house the Ark of the Covenant, which sat between two massive cherubs. The Most Holy House represents your seat of consciousness. It's symbolic of the pineal gland situated between the two cherubs, which represent the two hemispheres of the brain. The two angels covering the Ark of the Covenant symbolize these two hemispheres. In Mark 16, 19, it is said that Jesus was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. The right hand of God represents the right hemisphere of the brain which is associated with creativity, imagination, intuition, and insight. In contrast, the left side of the brain is more materialistic and logical. The right hemisphere of the brain is connected to the cerebrum. There are 12 systems in the body corresponding to the 12 zodiac signs. Aries, which rules the head, is symbolized by the ram. This is allegorical to the cerebrum, known as the Lamb of God, where critical thinking takes place. The land flowing with milk and honey represents the pineal and pituitary glands at the center of the brain. When Moses crosses the Red Sea, it symbolizes crossing the corpus callosum from the left side of the brain to the right. The head is metaphorically heaven. This is why depictions often place God within the brain. The Bible has been interpreted in ways that lead many to take it literally, preventing them from realizing their true powers, their divine self which is represented by Christ. Throughout the annals of history, civilizations have encoded their knowledge in symbols, metaphors, and allegories. Ancient Egypt, for instance, with its enigmatic hieroglyphics, was a civilization steeped in the esoteric. The Eye of Horus, one of its most renowned symbols, is believed by many to represent protection, royal power, and good health. However, deeper interpretations suggest that it may also symbolize the pineal gland, Similar to the Ark of the Covenant, this all-seeing eye hints at inner vision and spiritual awakening. In ancient Greece, the Delphic maxims inscribed in the Temple of Apollo at Delphi were not mere guidelines for daily life, but profound philosophical enigmas. One of its most famous inscriptions, Know Thyself, is a call to delve deep into one's consciousness and understand the divine nature of human existence. This self-awareness parallels the seat of intuition and imagination located within our brain structure. The Hindu scriptures, too, contain veiled references to inner awakening. The concept of the third eye, or Ajna Chakra, located between the eyebrows, is believed to be the center of intuition and foresight. Activation of this eye grants spiritual insight and connection to higher realms, mirroring the Ark's significance nestled between the cherubs in the Bible. These cultures, separated by geography and time, all echo a singular truth. 
that within each of us lies a secret chamber of knowledge, wisdom, and insight. By exploring these ancient clues, we begin our journey towards unveiling the profound mysteries of consciousness. The concept of duality, especially pertaining to perception and consciousness, isn't unique to the biblical tales. Ancient civilizations had their own ways of interpreting this dual nature of human cognition. In Chinese philosophy, the concept of yin and yang embodies this duality. Yin, often associated with darkness, receptivity, and femininity, could be likened to the intuitive right hemisphere. On the other hand, yang, symbolizing brightness, activity, and masculinity, resonates with the logical prowess of the left hemisphere. This ancient wisdom suggests that to achieve a harmonious life, one must balance both of these forces, akin to achieving balance between both hemispheres of the brain. Similarly, the ancient Egyptians revered Thoth, the deity of wisdom and writing. Thoth was often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis, a bird known for its sharp beak, representing piercing intelligence and balance. It's tempting to imagine Thoth as a personification of the unified brain, with both its analytical and imaginative facets in harmony. The Mayans, with their intricate understanding of astronomy and time, often spoke of the duality of life and death, light and shadow. Their calendars and architectural wonders reflect a deep knowledge of the cosmos, suggesting an advanced integration of both analytical and intuitive thought processes. In essence, the interplay between the left and right hemispheres is not just a modern neurological discovery, but an age-old understanding. Different cultures, through their myths, deities, and philosophies, have highlighted the importance of harnessing both realms of perception. By embracing this dual nature, one can aim for a more holistic understanding of the self and the universe. Throughout antiquity, the number 12 has held profound significance in diverse cultures, being intricately woven into their cosmologies and life philosophies. Babylonians, one of the earliest civilizations, devised a lunisolar calendar divided into 12 months, each associated with a specific constellation. These constellations laid the foundation for the 12 zodiac signs that later cultures would adopt and integrate into their own belief systems. Their keen observations of celestial patterns showcased a sophisticated understanding of time and the cosmos. The ancient Greeks, with their pantheon of gods and goddesses, venerated the 12 Olympians each governing different realms and facets of human existence. This alignment of 12 divine entities reflects a harmonious cosmic order and further emphasizes the significance of the number in shaping human consciousness. In the realm of spirituality, Jainism, an ancient Indian religion, speaks of 12 vows or resolutions that one must undertake for spiritual progression. These vows serve as guidelines ensuring an individual's alignment with the universe's rhythm and balance. Furthermore, the ancient Hebrews had the 12 tribes of Israel, descendants of the 12 sons of Jacob. Each tribe had its own distinct role and territory, together forming a united and harmonious nation. This tribal system could be seen as an allegorical representation of the body's 12 systems, each with its specific function but contributing to the whole's optimal functioning. Returning to the zodiac, Aries, or Aries, the ram, signifies the beginning of the zodiac cycle, embodying new beginnings and leadership. Its association with the cerebram, the brain's central command, and the lamb of God offers a unifying thread across traditions, suggesting that enlightenment begins with mastering one's mind. In essence, the emphasis on the number 12 across various ancient cultures highlights its universal significance, pointing towards a cosmic design that shapes our understanding of the universe and our place within it. The concept of a paradisiacal realm, imbued with abundance and serenity, exists in many ancient traditions. These depictions often serve as metaphors for spiritual enlightenment and the attainment of inner balance. The ancient Egyptians revered the Nile River as a source of life and sustenance. Its annual flooding deposited nutrient-rich silt, making the land fertile. This natural event can be juxtaposed with our internal land of milk and honey. Just as the Nile's waters nourish the earth, the secretions from our pineal and pituitary glands 
nourish our body and mind, facilitating our connection to higher realms. In Hinduism, the concept of Amrita, a divine nectar granting immortality, echoes a similar theme. This nectar drips from the Sahasrara, a crown chakra, representing the spiritual pinnacle. Its descent through the body revitalizes the soul, comparable to how the hormones from our central brain glands invigorate our physiological and psychological states. Ancient Greek mythology presents the Elysian Fields, a paradisiacal afterlife realm reserved for the souls of the heroic and virtuous. This idyllic plane symbolizes a heightened state of consciousness where the soul experiences eternal bliss. The path to Elysium, much like the activation of our brain's pineal and pituitary glands, requires understanding, discipline, and inner harmony. Taoism, with its profound reverence for nature, describes the concept of De, or inner power and virtue. By harmonizing with the Tao, the universal flow, one can tap into this wellspring of energy. This alignment can be likened to the synchronization of our bodily functions with our spiritual essence, facilitated by our central glands. Such ancient allegories, spanning diverse cultures, emphasize the universal quest for a harmonious existence. They remind us that the journey to our inner land flowing with milk and honey is both a spiritual endeavor and a physiological process interconnected in the dance of consciousness. Throughout history, various ancient cultures have encoded profound wisdom in their myths, legends, and religious texts, nudging seekers toward inner revelations. In the Egyptian pantheon, Osiris was killed and dismembered, only to be resurrected by the magic of his wife, Isis. This story isn't merely a tale of death and rebirth. It reflects the cyclical nature of life and the innate human ability to rejuvenate and transform. Just as Osiris rose anew, individuals have the potential to transcend their limitations and be reborn into greater versions of themselves. The ancient Greeks spoke of the legend of Hercules and his 12 labors. While easily mistaken as heroic feats against monsters, these labors can be viewed as inner battles against one's own vices and limitations. By conquering these challenges, Hercules didn't just achieve physical strength, but also attained spiritual enlightenment, highlighting the journey of self-realization. Buddhism's core teaching revolves around the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, guiding individuals toward nirvana, the ultimate state of enlightenment. By following this path, individuals move beyond suffering, realizing the Buddha nature within. This mirrors the idea of discovering one's intrinsic God-Self, recognizing that divinity is not separate but imminent within each being. The Tao Te Ching, an ancient Chinese text, emphasizes aligning with the Tao, the universal way or flow. By being in harmony with this flow, individuals realize their true nature, which is divine and boundless. This realization is akin to understanding one's inherent Christ consciousness. In essence, whether through biblical allegories or ancient myths, humanity has been given keys to unlock their inner divinity. These narratives guide seekers toward an inner sanctum where the lines between human and divine blur and where we truly understand our magnificent, boundless nature. The Bible stories and symbols might just be a map guiding us to harness our cerebral potential and discover the divinity within. So the next time you hear a religious verse or fable, take a moment, dive deeper than the surface, look for connections and allegories, and you might just uncover secrets about yourself and the universe. Thank you for watching. If this video resonated with you or added value, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep listening, keep growing, and keep shining. Stay blessed.